The reason that that was a major focus for me to improve outcomes for Māori students was because, for me, fundamentally, every student should have the same high expectations and high aspirations. And my observations, both through the data and the way the students behaved at school, indicated to me that they neither had a sense of connection here nor a sense that there were higher aspirations held for them. So we really needed to change that culture and lift achievement for all students. Overall, um, the school population is 40% Māori and for the first time this year, we have more Māori boys in Year 9 than we do any other ethnicity. So the mandate is there to improve outcomes for uh, young Māori men um, in Northland and across New Zealand. The reason we engaged with the Culturally Responsive and Relational Pedagogy programme was quite simply to close the gap between Māori and non-Māori achievement and we know that what's good for Māori is good for all. I think it was really important um, to, in order to initially make change, um, to explore the concept of whanaungatanga, that idea around care and connectedness, that relationship fundamentally important to the students and their whanau. The first thing that was explored as a staff in groups, not, not necessarily as a whole staff but in groups around what whanaungatanga, that idea of care and connectedness and building relational trust really might look like and sound like and teachers were able to consider that and make incremental changes to their practice in the classroom. One of the biggest things we know that works for boys is about um, that they understand that we care, so they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care is often a, a phrase that is bandied about. When they know you care and when they know you're genuine and, and authentic, then that two-way, I guess, teaching and learning approach becomes a lot more um, fluid and a lot more obvious and clear. The boys can feel it if you're genuine. And that's around the spirit of ako, I suppose. Um, we learn from boys as, as much as they learn from us. Embracing uh, Māori culture has been uh, another significant shift that the school has made. In fact, when I first came to the school, there was a pōwhiri to welcome me in. So that was really special and continues to be special for me. We have a school haka, um, which all of the boys learn. We have school waiata, which all of the boys learn. And that becomes um, certainly our way of being. That's how it's going to be for every boy at this school. A cool change to see was Akaraku School's um, embrace of kapaka and how sh um, she enjoys our, uh, watching and uh, enjoys being a part of our growth as a group, as a kappa, encouraging us to push further beyond our limits as, as a kappa, as a kapaka. It feels empowering that they are embracing our culture with our values and um, our, our ideals as Māori and embracing our language and our culture as well as our waiata, bringing that into our assemblies. It's quite joyous that they are doing this and that they are embracing us as people and our culture and our language. In recent years we've had a very active and progressive group of parents who have been part of Kōtoko Kitarangi. They've renamed it and rebranded that group of Māori parents who are supporting the school and they have influenced quite a lot of the things that we do in the school. For instance, they questioned the way in which we selected our prefects with a view to having more of our Māori boys becoming prefects. And so we have widened the criteria and the manner in which those boys are selected so they can now be nominated by our staff and other students. Whereas before it was very much a self-promotion exercise, which we recognised was not culturally responsive to the needs of some of those boys who were much quieter leaders. Over the past three years from the beginning when it first started to now, uh, it's been a massive difference in communication. First of all, because we were just starting now, you know, there were a bit of just us getting initiated, um, but now it's just back and forth, back and forth all the time. You know, them inviting us to some of their professional developments as whānau. Since then, it's just been a really good opportunity for us to be part of a group that can have some influence, in, and we have a member that's on the board so they bring back some of the communication from the board to us and we can give our thoughts with our representative to be able to take back to the board so there's all this communication happening. Team Solutions have been with us every step of the way on this process and really guided us through what for some people was reasonably challenging. I'm really happy with the level of achievement that we've reached and I think now for us as a school we want to maintain that level. We you know, track really well against schools nationally. A good example at level two, in 2014 we we're sitting around 50% for a pass rate for Māori boys. That's now up to 80%. 
So in 2017, we got 80% of our Māori boys succeeding at level two. And that's just one outcome. You know, that's an academic outcome. There's all the other measures, that, the more intangible things, I suppose. And certainly, you know, when we speak to the boys, they, they feel good about being here. So our next big step is to see how we can embed this process so that it's sustainable at Boys High in the future because everything that we're hearing both from staff and from students and from the parent community tells us that we're heading in the right direction. Thank you.